All right, everyone, here's our sports news of the day for August 31st, 2024. We have Nick Saban and Pat McAfee clips. These are very funny. Steph Curry reveals why he took the Warriors out of his bio. The Texans owner roasts the Browns over the Deshaun Watson trade. And Tyree Kill has high praise for Travis Hunter. All those videos are included. Thank you for watching. All right, everyone, so college football is back, and we got college game day. This clip of Pat McAfee and Nick Saban is going viral. Enjoy. So obviously, you know, college game day today was awesome. McAfee was great. Saban was great. The whole cast um, was great. But this just shows that <laughs> the difference, right, between Nick Saban and Pat McAfee. And, and this is going to be something that only makes college game day better, right? I mean, this having someone like Pat McAfee, who's great at getting the crowd pumped, you know, has crazy takes on different things and crazy reasons for picking certain teams. And then you have Nick Saban, who's going to be, you know, former coach, obviously, you know, just by the book, by the numbers. I think it's going to be a perfect mix in videos like this i mean i believe college game day themselves actually tweeted this out and they said two different types of people um and you know i i think that's what's going to really help grow this show because you gotta remember when the, the the audience is watching this you know you could tell by the comments there's people that want different things and so when you could give them both when you give them pat mcafee and you know him being kind of crazy and then you give them Nick Saban giving a different view on things or a different style, you can kind of appeal to both instead of only having one or the other. And so we'll see how long it, you know, it goes on for with, you know, Pat McAfee being there and Saban being there. My guess it'll be for a while, but certainly I thought this was a very, very funny clip. All right, everyone. So Tyreek Hill had high praise for Travis Hunter. This is what he tweeted out. Whoever got that first pick, I don't care if you need a lineman or QB Travis Hunter is one of one. I mean, he's right. You know, I really do believe that. Look, I think if a team needs a quarterback, they take a quarterback. I just think that's how it goes. But Travis Hunter is one of those guys that would, is going to make teams consider, you know, I know we needed a quarterback, but man, this guy could be a once in a generation type talent. And, and I think, you know, a lot of times we you see the highlights, you see him playing both sides of the ball. You know, and, and I think people build the hype off that. But if you watched that game, the truth is, is there's a lot more to be hyped about than just that aspect of it, right? It wasn't just the the stats. It wasn't just the amount of catches, the amount of yards, the amount of touchdowns. It was when they came. You know, a lot of them came on key third downs. That play when he made that crazy catch for his third touchdown, I mean, they were struggling in the red zone at that point. If he misses that, you know, you really don't know how that game goes. So he just made key play after key play. And I think a lot of teams, we can keep this up throughout the year. A lot of teams are going to be considering him, certainly, you know, in those first few picks. I still think QBs are going to go first just because usually those teams that are bad, that are up front, they're looking for that franchise QB. And as good as Travis Hunter is, even though he plays both sides of the ball, I think they'll still take a QB. There's definitely a chance here that Travis Hunter is the 1-1. One -one because he is that now. All right, everyone. So Nick Saban had the college game day panel or host, whatever you want to call it. He had him rolling. Here's what he had to say. I just want to say you guys keep talking about a $20 million roster. Yeah. If you don't pay the right guys, you'll be shit out of luck. <laughs> <laughs> That's life, baby. That's life. Congratulations. You just, you just broke the internet. <laughs> By the way, as funny as this obviously was, you know, hearing the hearing him say this, this is 100% right. And it goes not just for Ohio State, but for every team out there. You know, you, you see these teams every year. They got the five-star recruits. They got this. They got that. And yet they never can get over that hump of beating those good teams. And part of that is coaching. And I don't want to – and, and I, I want to be clear. I'm not saying necessarily that it's on the coaches and they're not doing their job, right? That's not what I'm saying. 
The point is, sometimes these players who are so hyped, they don't always live up to that hype. You know, I think we blame coaches a lot in football. And coaching in football is a massive deal. You know, you see guys like Saban and Belichick and Kirby Smart and others. You know, there's a reason they were so successful for so long is because they created a culture. And so coaches definitely should get blamed. But sometimes this is how it goes, right? You get all these big recruits. They come in. Either they're not bought into the culture, they're not, you know, as dedicated to that culture, they're more in it for themselves or whatever it is. And I think Nick Saban is 100% right with this. We're rooting for Ohio State this year. We want to see good college football from many good teams. You know, it always stinks when you have one team that's just beating the crap out of everybody. Um, But coaches should take note of this, right? What he's saying, even if it's a little bit of a joke, there's a lot of words of wisdom in there, meaning build a program that is built off the culture you want to set. Not necessarily off, well, I can get him if I pay him enough money. He's a big recruit. He's a big recruit. Build a program, build an identity, and it may cost you a year, right? Maybe there's a year you're not as good as you would like to be. But if you could stick through that and you could just build it and build it and build it, in the long, in the long run, you're going to be better off. So thank you all for watching, and we will see you next time. All right, everyone. So Texans owner Hannon McNair on a, on a podcast took a little bit of a shot at the Browns. Here is what she said. And I mean, just, you know, the whole Browns thing, I thought that was kind of a cool thing with Jim Brown and stuff. So it was, for uh, you. Well, not for me. <laughs> I'm Ohio ugh. boy. <laughs> 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 didn't do that for any of the other teams lately. thank a brown have you thanked a brown lately <laughs> i don't well i thank him for coming and getting their tushes beat yeah in the playoffs i thank him for all of our players oh 2002 this is a pretty crazy uh thing because you know it's it's not wrong right they did this big deshaun watson trade got all of these assets and now the texans are in a great spot but i think the craziest Part of this is the fact, even with the huge mistake, you know, seemingly the Browns made, they're still pretty good too, right? Usually a trade like that will just destroy the team, but the defense is still working. They still got to run a game. I think right now the Browns actually do have a pretty good culture regarding, you know, they just play tough football and they have this quarterback who isn't playing up to his level. They have a quarterback who keeps getting hurt. And they're still finding a way to win games, still making the playoffs. It's pretty wild, right? But I thought this was a funny segment. And the Texans owner, you could see the smile. You know, she's like, yeah, we robbed that team. Um, they took an asset off our hands that wasn't going to be good for the future anyway, seemingly. And we got a bunch of assets. Pretty crazy. And now we're looking like one of the best in the league. All right, everyone. So this is one of those... Interesting story, but also kind of stupid. So Steph was asked why he took the Warriors out of his bio. Here was his response. You're not going anywhere, right? I was anywhere, just right? proud to be an Olympian. Oh. <laughs> You're here forever. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm shooting with Steph and Aisha Curry today. Um, what's happening? I just played a nice little round of golf. So I'm not asking him why he took the Warriors off his Instagram. Oh. Wait, what? Very Sorry. mindful. Every... Very demure. Wait. You're not going anywhere, I was anywhere, just proud right? to be an Olympian. Oh. <laughs> You're here forever. Yeah. Forever. Forever. That's the plan. That's the plan. <laughs> All right, That's thanks, hilarious. Guys. So excited to share this episode with you. So this is, like I said, one of those dumb stories. We we did cover it because we were wondering what is this, but you know, it's funny because you see players do stuff like this, and then you're just like, did you not think people were going to bring it up? You know, obviously the media is going to start covering it. The media is going to start talking about it. But I do think this is a representative of a larger point. So Curry just signed, you know, his extension, right? He just signed that. But there is no question in my mind that Curry is going to start getting more vocal. He's going to start getting more, you know, upset with the organization if they cannot figure out a plan to get this team to become a contender again sometime soon. Because the, as it stands right now, there's just not a whole lot to hang your head on. You don't see the plan. You know, it's not like you could say, okay, well, they did this, and now we understand that this can be the setup. The team they have right now, it just doesn't feel like is anywhere near contending. And I know maybe they make the playoffs this year, but that's because of the success of Steph Curry and how good he is if they do indeed make the playoff. They're not going to make the playoffs because this team is well built, right? Because it just doesn't, it just doesn't, like that was what made the Warriors so great when they were winning titles was it was not just they had great players, but it had they had players that fit together. They had a team. They don't have that right now. So even though 
this is kind of a jokey thing, like, you know, haha, you know, it's funny. It still is a big deal because if they don't play well over this season, I'm telling you, it's going to start getting louder in, you know, in the Warriors organization. It's going to start, people are going to start getting upset, including Steph Curry, because he's going to say, hey, man, we need to get this thing rolling. So thank you all for watching, and we will see you next time.